In the beginning, I was like, what am I doing here? Can I leave? Is there a way out? Can I just like walk out the door? It's kind of hard to believe, but yeah, it's over. It's like everyone says that the, the days go by slow and the weeks go by fast, and that, that proved to be pretty true. Crazy. And I, I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way, but there's just, there's so much. You're always going, you're always tired, you're always hungry, you're always trying to figure something out. And once you think you figure it out, they add something to it. And it's just constantly have something new that you're doing. And I mean, it just, it, it just is. And it's not like crazy in an insane way, but there's no break. You just, when you really feel like, I need to stop, I need to, I'm gonna break down. They just push you that little more and then you realize you can do it and it's just, it doesn't stop. Don't come here and expect to be hidden in the back and just float by. You have to do what you get asked and if you get put in a point of leadership, you have to do it. Before I was like, oh, great, it's a better country, awesome. Go America. And now I'm like, I'm, I'm a part of it, like keeping everything safe and the flag means more as well. I mean, I'm like, I'm there to help protect our country too and just, it definitely just means more. Looking back at it now, it doesn't feel like it was that long, but uh, when you were in like zero week in the first few weeks, you know, it was a long time. The first night was really crazy, and they were screaming and yelling, and like no one really knew anything, what to do, so they were just all in everyone's faces. How about louder next time, the spawn you! When you're done moving around, princess, well, yeah, smile at me like I'm having a good time. Getting yelled at or intimidated. Yeah, roll your eyes. We're gonna have fun tonight, you and me. Single file line on four, three, two, one. Four, let's go. Getting through the first night is stressful. It's their first night here. They're confused, scared, nervous. Uh, different emotions running through their, their mind, through their body. Go down, all the way around. You get upstairs and then it's my start like, you know, freaking out a little bit because you're yelling at us, trying to get our keys out and open it and you know, your hands are shaking and you just can't think about what I do. It's like stage fright. Almost every day is like stage fright. You're just like, uh, uh, every moment like when they're yelling at you. Nobody in here is as tough as you think you are. If we were to get them off the bus, usher them in, hold their hand, we're not setting a precedent. We're not setting a structure. We're not saying, I'm in charge. I say, you do. We're not just doing it to be mean. We're not just doing it because we think we have all this power. It's focused, direct. It has a purpose. You have to demand their attention. You have to command the situation. You have to bring them in. You have to let them know, look, I am the alpha dog, I am in charge, I'm going to tell you what to do and you're going to listen to it. You don't want to, you're going to. Remember, you do what I say when I tell you to do it in the manner in which I tell you to do it, as I understood. Yes, sir. Any deviation from that is only going to make you look dumb because you chose not to listen to me. Somebody calls you dumb, it's not because you're dumb, it's because you're doing dumb stuff, as I understood. Yes, sir. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you. It's a control you thing. you got to get them wrapped in quick or otherwise you'll lose them. And if, if you don't set that standard, if you don't set that precedence, you know, you're not going to have that order See, and discipline sir. that you know, get that strong, good product at the end. Get back to where you were. Come here. Let's go. Let's go. Get back to where you were. Get back over there. Come here now. Let's go. You know, he's our, he's our world, and we're lucky to be living in it right now. If I can say it like that, like, <laughs> he decides when the sun comes up and when it goes down. You know, we don't. So you are lost and confused. Stop. First of all, it's inside out. So yeah, you. Now strap it. Pick up your stuff. Pick it up! What are you doing? At first you're just like, alright, is this a game? Is he is he kind of playing with our minds or is the, the military, you know, trying to break us down? And, and, and you, you hear all these stories from Brandon's like, just play the game, they're gonna try to break you, and you know, just 
but there's there's a lot more to it with Staff Sergeant Dorte because I can already tell how much he cares for all of us and how at the level like he explained it today earlier like the level that he wants us to be at and the expectations he has for us and he's not going to let us fail him either if we do we're out slow it down guy on bear move to your right guy on bear to your right guy on bear i understand they're just trying to make us the best airmen that they can possibly make us the sooner that we get everything together the you know the less headaches that we're going to experience personally that's what i believe and i i hope so There's two elements in each bay. There are two bays, so you have four elements. That's why we have four elements. The dorm chief is in turn in charge of the entire flight. I relay a message, however complicated it might be to the dorm chief. The dorm chief will break it down using and giving the elements only enough information piece by piece at a time to get them to start moving their trainees and they'll feed them more to get the task Bailey, accomplished. Mott, Hannah, Greer. Then ask your wingman, go to your element leader, come to me. But other than that, there should be no talking. See these guys, trainees. A lot of it is really to try to encourage the, the wingman concept that they have that, you know, they, they want you to use the people who are around you to try to figure things out, get things completed on your own without having somebody telling you what to do every single day every second, even though they are telling us what to do every single second. The same standards which you enforce on others, you need to ensure that you practice yourself. He's taught me a lot about being a leader. Practice what you preach, right? Yes, sir. It's always here, your I thought I had the capabilities and the qualities needed to be a leader. And honestly, he's shown me that I have a lot to learn. And the key is, is how to work with people. You've got kids that come here that have done things as far as you know, leadership roles in high school or whatever, um, but I'm not going to expect anybody, you know, I'm not going to slap a title on them, say, oh, you're dorm chief, by the way, you've got this. Um, they need to be mentored and molded, and there's a process to it. It's, um, I'm, I'm letting the, the elm leaders and the dorm chief figure out how to do conflict resolution because I don't want to come to the rescue all the time. Because if something's happening, I'm not mom. I'm not there to be like, well, you're bad. You're, you can't be doing this. You need to talk out. to that person. Ladies! Matter of fact, everyone take out the BMT books out of the, um, the BMT binders out of the wall locker and open them up. You get 30 guys in a small confined space. You know, 20 guys in a shower that has eight shower heads, you know, spraying off the wall. And we're all trying to figure out how to make it work. And it's just... It's forced, it's forced on us that we will live and work together, or we will figure out a way. And I was like, okay, it's not just about me anymore, it's about the country. And it's been, it's been neat. Because <clears throat> my hair, you know, taps play now. I can feel myself. You know, there's a lot of meaning behind that. And you're a part of this amazing history and brotherhood at such a minimal trainee level for us right now but you know in the future it's like you never know
they will get out of the bed in the same manner in which I get out of the bed with a sense of urgency and speed and purpose for their day. The way in which they get out of the bed needs to represent what they expect to get out of their day. 57 trainees will have beds made, dressed, shaven, teeth brushed, no less than 10 minutes. Everything is just so compacted and so quick, and it throws you through a loop, but it just makes you realize a lot of things that you don't really need. And it makes it easier for me, at least, to, I'm not focusing on things like my cell phone or Facebook, anything like that, and just, it makes it easier for me to focus on them telling me stuff, and I still make mistakes, um, but looking at it, like, listen to them, get, get your stuff done, and get out. Two, sir. Three, sir. Thirteen, sir. Fourteen, sir. You always have your few that are just, you know, top notch, physically fit, took care of themselves. Uh, you can tell that, that fitness was part of their daily regimen. You've got some that they come here thinking that, oh, this is boot camp. I'm going to get whipped in shape. This is, you know, they're going to do it for me. We don't know how to do it right. Don't look at us. We might screw you up. That's what they don't understand, so they come here not being able to do any push-ups or sit-ups. They don't realize they're not just hurting themselves on that facet for PT. You only did three! Let's go, get them! it helps! I like to think of it as getting paid to get in shape, so it works for me. I can definitely feel in my body, you know, I'm losing a lot of body fat. And kind of running off stored energy, my weight's decreasing. Being in shape and being physically fit is not just for PT. Being physically fit helps keep you awake all day, keeps you healthy as far as you, alertness, mental readiness, being able to sustain from 0.445 to 2100 every night. That's, that's a long time to be go, go, go. You know, I, can, I can feel it in my brain, um, if that makes sense, where you gotta keep your nutrition up and your sleep up. When your body's going through this kind of stress and fatigue and changes, and if you're not physically fit, it's hard for the body to handle that. I've been to the range a few times. I was into guns before I came here, a little. Just like a little hobby. It was a fun hobby. Mouse like a part of our gym. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Time. 50 seconds. There are a lot of kind of alpha female um, in our flight personalities that are having a hard time with it. So there's a little bit of conflict, butting heads. There's a lot of younger people who are, you know, still like really into themselves. I mean, all of us are into ourselves, but we have to kind of let go and do what's best for the group. And a lot of them are having a hard time doing that. I know that they're not going to be able to do it, but I'm forcing them to get into that, that mindset of talking back and forth. And it usually comes to a boiling point of where, uh, you know, oh, man, we can't do this, or I step in because I know things are going south. And certain words, certain things get said, and, you know, that's my triggering moment. So, all right, it's time to have the talk. Now, before I go off on my tangent, it starts with you. You got a beef with my own leaders. You stand up right now. You be a big girl, and you put it on the table. See how big you are now. You got beef. Get up right now. Some of you aren't as tough as you think you are. That's for damn sure. 
it was a house divided in many ways. A house divided of people who cared and people who didn't care. Um, it was a house divided of people who got it and didn't get it. And that's where, as an MTI, you got to step in and be like, no. Us, just because we sit around on the bed and we do our stuff together and have our conversations, don't mean we have a problem with everybody. So when we, you know, do a little head movement or whatever you feel like we do, we, we have attitude problems and we know. And y'all get smart just as well. Irby and Ma and anybody else. I'm going to call the names since y'all want to put names in books. I'm going to call names. Y'all get smart and y'all talk to people crazy too. And and then the, sh the stuff that happened yesterday, we came in the door five minutes. We, as soon as we walked over that line, you have ten minutes to get in the shower. But if it was somebody else, y'all wouldn't have did that sh And y'all said that it happened before, but I've never seen it. Never. And you're so worried about everybody else, and you're so worried, listen to me. And you think that I pick on you because you bobble your head around. Who here constantly gets my love and approval for not being able to stand still? Oh, look at that. You're not the only one. It's a difference. If you let a situation like that go, if you let a trainee, you know, just keep going, you give them the power. This is a personal attack against... Everybody that's not you, you need to calm down. Even in a setting and like that, it's out. it's so fragile. And you're, you're on the defensive. You're trying to defuse the situation. At the same time, I'm still in control. You're not letting anything in. But so she was just to the boiling point of so emotional, and she wanted to get her point across. But at the same time, I care. But at the same you know, you're playing all these different roles at once. But you have to let the fight know. No, 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 no. I'll just send you out of here right now. And you won't be a productive part of this. You won't be part of the solution. I'll just keep you a part of the problem. And we're in the business of breaking bad habits. And if that comes to it, I'm going to shut you down. And I'm going to be like, and you're done talking. But you need to shut your mouth when told. You need to interject when only told to interject. <coughs> so which is it going to be? <coughs> I'm interjecting now. Then sit down. Well, I said you're not the only one. There's other group, other individuals. They have a problem with the way that I either talk to them, address what they're doing wrong, because again, you all are so worried about your feelings. It's not my job to make you feel good. My job is to train you so that when you go out to do your job, you don't get somebody else killed. Um, I went through and I made it a point. The ones that were sitting in the corner like this, I was like, and what do you have to say about it? And what's your it opinion? Needs to be said. It better be said right now. fully understands what the Lumion concept is. For an example, with the laundry detail. I was aware of the Now, lately, uh, the majority of us have time started during the time. Some people, and then, yeah, like, like, they help us today because we were sure we spent I made them, everybody, say something so that way. You better get out of my flight right now. I swear to God, get out of my flight. Y'all are lazy and I'm sick of it. I want my daddy to be proud of me. Y'all are so sick, man. Get out right now. That's all I gotta say. It's, um, you're dealing with the psyche. You're dealing with brain and, you know, people's, uh, you gotta, you gotta be careful with it as far as getting trainees to a certain emotion then back and forth and and you just can't leave them hanging like that you need to you, you got to get them through the, the different stages unless you have a child or something like boyfriends and all that that's nothing but when you have someone who anybody who's parent no there's there's so many things that we're expecting them to do every once in a while you just need to drop a comment that they're just like or old or <laughs> without children and they'll laugh a little bit you get, like she said, there, yeah, there's boyfriends. So there's a fine, there's fine line where you got to be like, all right, and this is where I'm going to insert joke. But she turns that little southern charm on. Hey, y'all. Side <laughs> <laughs> conversations, they need to stop. <laughs> so, and, and it's funny because you can bring them right up to it, and it's almost like overinflating a balloon. It's going, 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 and then you can pop it, and then, okay, we're good now. All right, this is it. We're, we're walking out the door. The switch is going from here back to game on mode. 
And that's the whole point when we're talking about the day room. You know, like, there's that door. Okay, in here, okay, we, can, we can let loose a little bit. Out there, it's game on. If you take the advice, if you do what you all put out on the table, there's no stopping you. Really not. You got some half decent marching going on. Your dorm doesn't look that bad. Notice I'm dropping these subtle compliments. <laughs> you, you screwed up less today. It's a, it's a very delicate process because if you let up too soon, they'll never find the switch. And if you hold on too tight, then you just you, you deteriorate and it can be ineffective. All right, real quick, we gotta go. started with Fest 1 and Fest 2 in the second week of training. That prepared them with some basic fundamentals in order to move around and defend themselves. Take over. Get ready. Fire. The usual six is getting trainees used to hand-to-hand -hand combat, one or a person-to-person -person confrontation. They want to get rough and tough with each other. They want to, to embrace that warrior role. And to be able to go out there, literally let their hair down, put those football helmets on, and then you just go out there and have fun. It teaches them a lot of confidence and a lot of reassurance of their abilities to defend themselves. And that's what we're going to cover in basic military training. self aid buddy care one. Quickly, hey, man, please, you got your package up, let's go. The third week of training progresses self aid buddy care one, two, three, and four. They've taken all the kind of just first aid combat criteria training that you're going to need to know in order to Keep life sustained until trained medical personnel can get there. C burning is conducted in the fourth week of training. C burning stands for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear and high yield explosives. And they go through a class that shows them how to don the equipment. After that, they're introduced to the gas chamber. They take the mask off, take a deep breath in of the gas and then are required to give a reporting statement. It doesn't hit them as hard until they're introduced to the fresh air outside to where the gases take full effect. It burns. It's clear, but it burns. The worst part is just trying to open your eyes afterwards. And once you blink it all out of your eyes, then, you know, it, it, was, it was all right. Also, we have the officer course, which builds their confidence with themselves and working as a group. Next week, we go into CPR and temper tips. If you add all that stuff up and you put it together with that bearing and discipline, how to set up an area, how to defend themselves, how to defend the base, um, and it all culminates at the beast. It's a training led environment. There's going to be limited manning, limited supervision, and they're required to use all the tools that they, they've learned since the day they got off that bus. Alarm, flat, off level four. Exercise, exercise. We empower them to, to go through the scenarios, and they're there checking off, making sure that they're doing it right, and they'll have their hot washes at the end of each scenario saying, okay, this is what you did right, this is what you did wrong, this is what you didn't change, all culminating up to their final evaluation. There are times that I'm like, why am I getting yelled at right now? Like, what did I even do wrong? But it, it, we just, we learned to do things better, better, our flight and our brother flight, just having the instructor team that we did. Everything he did had a reason behind it. And at the time, it may have seemed stupid to us or it may have seemed meaningless or whatever. But looking back now, it just, it was all to make us better and better and get better. I didn't like her at first. I hated her. I really did. I, when I first met her, I was like, dang it, we got a female TI. 
because I took for I've always heard the horror stories but now like I look up to her so much anytime she calls out about something it was necessary she's awesome she really is awesome she's just the prime example of like what you want to be as an airman so and she's a beast at everything she does I really want to be like her <laughs> in him we have a mentor we have an instructor we have uh, a father figure for some a disciplinarian, someone who's very stern, very strict, but who is very meticulous and really, really knows his measure of, of being an airman. Yes, sir. This is my last flight. <laughs> this is my last flight. It's not. It's not a. Uh, well, let's just say it is. Uh, this. This is my last flight as far as being an Air Force Base military training instructor. Hey, you might need sharpies. <laughs> Anyone else would have a different instructor besides Staff Sergeant Dorte. He's just a mentor. Yep. When people first told me, they're like, you're going to go there and hate your MTI, and then you're going to end up loving them. Like, my first two weeks here, I was like, no. There's no way I'm ever going to like any of these people. They are absolutely terrible. And now, like, I, I wouldn't change our MTIs for anything, even though they're really intense and still sometimes like to scream at us a little bit. And everyone looks up to them. Whenever we're in the day room, uh, everyone's just locked on listening to what he has to say, because whatever he says, it usually helps us out. It's everything. It's gonna be important. And right. it's yeah, it's gonna be important. Whatever he says, it's gonna be important. In the beginning, we needed her, but we definitely did not want her. But she was there. And so now that we want her, because she's just so awesome, and so is uh, Staff Sergeant Duarte. I mean, we we carry on what we what's been instilled in us here at BMT, core values, and um, and that's gonna be the determining factor on how how well we perform. But it's nice to have them around. Yeah. <laughs> you realize that this isn't over yet, right? <laughs> Thanks for being so nice to work with. I don't know. I think it was a it's a Mother's Day card, I think. I don't know, because they know I'm a mom. Your positive approach and your attention to detail make a real difference in everything you do. Positive approach, huh? <laughs> Is that what we're calling it these days? <laughs> this is the first flight I've ever had as a mom, I guess, as far as for Mother's Day, so maybe they just thought to capitalize on it. But Oh, it's for Mother's Day? Yes, yeah. I think in a way it was also their way of kind of giving me their little feedback and thank you, I guess, even though I don't need a thank you from a trainee. I know I can tell when, I can tell from the change that they appreciate who they are. Um, so, yeah, I think they're just being girls. <laughs> well, I'll have to sit down and read it all when I have time. Now back to work. Isn't there something you're all supposed to be doing? <laughs> Stuff like that you don't. Given there's a time and a place, I, if that were to happen, like in the first week of training, I'd be like, oh, hell no. And I'd, you know, I wouldn't say you ever get on a personal level with a trainee, but you're on a level of more understanding, more respect. And uh, I think there's more of a time and place for it, which the, now in training, it doesn't bother me that, that they would um, show their appreciation, I guess, in, in that form. <laughs> Sir Air Montgomery reports his order. Here it comes. <laughs> how, do you, how do you balance how do you balance this job with your life, with your home life? I felt guilty sometimes because of how much time you were giving us, and I saw your dedication to us, and I saw you come in on the weekends, and I was just like, damn. I mean, I can see what you're sacrificing. I can see what you're giving up, and that's something I want you to know. I always saw.